Today we are learning Prelude Number 1 by Samuel Makapar. I hope I said his name correctly. Um, this is an interesting composer. He is listed as a 20th century composer in Masterpieces with Flair, which is uh, the book that I am basing these lessons out of. But if you go to Wikipedia, he is listed as a Russian Romantic composer, and also if you're a California student that is considering this piece for an evaluation for a certificate of merit, in that syllabus, this is Makapar is listed as a uh, Romantic composer, not a 20th century uh, composer. So this piece is in ternary form. Uh, the A section is in C major, and the piece itself is in C major, and the B section is in the relative minor, uh, A minor, and of course, because it's in ternary form, the A section returns uh, at the end, and that's C major. The A section is exactly the same both times. So this piece is great for learning or practicing blocking and practicing chord inversions. Pretty much every measure is just a blocked chord. Or, I'm sorry, a broken chord, not a blocked chord. <laughs> and so you can really focus on moving around the piano and falling into place quickly. On top of it, there's some good pedaling um, exercise in here because each measure is pedaled, but you lift the damper pedal on the third beat. It's in 3-4 time. So it's more for an effect than for um, dampenings because you go down on the first beat heavy and then you lift on the third beat and when you lift you also lift your foot so it it causes a neat effect uh, in the music or in the texture of your playing okay uh, so some technical focuses is falling into position quickly and relaxed wrist rotation definitely required um, we talked about pedal and then also this is Allegro so this is a fast speed so you will need to do some uh, speed work on this piece too if you decide to learn this very charming cute short piece okay so let's take the A section first and I have three practice steps in mind and I keep uh, I will keep those practice steps in the A section and the B section because really the technical requirements are the same so the first practice step is blocking while playing and preparing. So blocking is when you play, in this case it's going to be playing all the notes of the measure together at once instead of how it's written. Which again is just chords. So these are literal triads. There's, I think there's a seventh chord here and there. Yeah, uh, I see a seventh chord at measure 14. So you're going to block each measure and then when you're comfortable with blocking, then you're going to do something called play and prepare where you're going to play the measure and let your wrist jump up a little or, or move up while you play. And then when you drop your wrist, you drop as quickly as possible into the next position and relax. And check your body, check your forearms, make sure you're relaxed. And then do it again for the next measure. Notice I'm not playing right away, I'm just going into position. And then only after I'm completely relaxed do I play. That's the A section, measures one through eight. So after you can do that comfortably, and definitely do repetitions. Once is not enough, at least three times. I sometimes go up to 10. It just depends how long I can focus. Uh, so after you do your play and prepare with blocking, let's work on the rotation. So wrist rotations, that movement of like when you turn a, a doorknob. Now you can either do this hands together and just let your left hand, your left hand will not be rotating. It's just playing the chords. So, although I would say that when you play these nice accented chords, don't think down motion, instead think up with your wrist while the fingers come down nice and firm. But the right hand is what we're going to focus the rotation on. So you can either do hands together or hands separate. It just depends on how comfortable you are moving around the keys. So I'm going to do hands together. Um, notice how I'm moving my wrist back and forth while I do this. I'm going very slow. And I'm going very exaggerated. I Like when I play the finger five, I'm pretty much karate chopping it. 
This is not how I would perform it. I'm just really getting my body to feel the rotation. And so after doing that a few times, it would be time to uh, impulse, or you could just start doing slow playthroughs too, because even though it's allegro, you need to be in control of your playing. So this would be a good time to check to make sure that you can play through nice and slow. And this is a good opportunity to focus on pedaling and lifting your pedal with the staccato notes on beat three. And then my last step, and this last step pretty much will last the longest for me too because uh, I want a good allegro. I want to be able to play fast easily, so I usually can't get fast playing down in a day. It usually takes me a little while, a couple weeks or so. It just depends on the piece and how difficult it is. Uh, so this is impulse practice. I'm going to play a measure and rest measure, but I'm going to play quick, quicker than I would perform it. So I'm going to count along too because I want to keep this very rhythmic while I do this. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And notice that I'm still keeping my my wrist in a nice pulse where I'm down on the first beat and up on the third beat for each of these. It's good to keep flexible wrist. If your wrist stiffen up, you're going to have a hard time speeding it up and it'll probably sound sloppy. Okay, let's do that by two measures now. So I'm going to play for two measures and rest for two measures. One, two, three, one. Oh, I did not play for two measures. Let me try that again. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So I'm going to go through uh, and play it a little slower than how I impulse practiced it just to see if I can play it quick and clean. It's actually a pretty good imp uh, performance speed. It's a little sloppy. I would like a couple more days with it, but uh, I would say that's pretty good for performance. Okay, same steps with the B section. B section is measures 9 through 16, and for practice, that's all you would need to do because 17 to the end is a repeat of the A section, so if you did the practice steps with the measures 1 through 8, then uh, 17 to the end has already been done. Okay, so what was my first one? Ah, locking with play and prepare. So uh, you play the chord. And notice, too, the B section is piano. A section is forte. B section is piano. Here's that seventh chord. Okay, I'll do that a couple times in my practice, but... No Notice that I fall and then I play. Okay, and then the next step would be slow exaggerated wrist motion. Remember, you can do this hands together or just your right hand. It's really up to you. So B section is piano. I'm going to play a little softer here. Okay, and then the next step, uh, I'm going to add the pedal. I'm going to play it a little slow and controlled, just straight through though. Lifting the pedal on the beat three. Okay, now impulse practice. I'm going to impulse by one measure. One, two, three. Okay, let's uh, do that by two measures now. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. 
And then I'm just going to play through a little bit slower than the impulse, but at a good performance speed, see if I can do it. There we go. Again, I would call that a pretty good performance speed. Uh, if I was uh, planning on performing this for like a concert, I'd want a couple more days with this, see if I could get it a little more polished and maybe even a little faster. It'll be more impressive faster. And it's just such a cute piece with the speed too. So, okay. Just one final suggestion. When you do repeat the A section at the end, there is a crescendo and a fermata. So make sure, you know, you get louder on the second to last measure that you hold the last measure. I would also put a slight retardando at the end of the second to the last measure, just for dramatic effect. Uh, let me play a little bit of that for you. This is just the last four measures. That was more retardando than I suggested, but I still think that sounds good. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this piece and happy practicing.